So now we're going to talk about prokaryotes. So remember, prokaryotes are smaller than eukaryotes, and they're going to be bacteria. So there's two types of bacteria that are out there. There's regular bacteria that you're used to hearing about, and then there's archaea bacteria. Um, archaea bacteria is known as like the extremophiles, which means that they like to live in extreme environments. So they like high or low pH or like really salty water or um, really cold, really hot, no oxygen. They can live in like crazy environments. Okay, so as far as like bacteria goes, we tend to think of bacteria as like this terrible, terrible stuff that makes us sick, and it can. I will give you that. But there's more and more studies coming out about bacteria and how important they actually are for all sorts of different things. They're important for our immunity. They're important for our digestion. Um, there is a great report about um, people that... They did a test with obese people versus non-obese people, and what they found was their gut bacteria was completely different, and when they gave the obese people um, a little seed from the gut of a non-obese person, the obese person all of a sudden lost weight just based on bacteria. So there's so many crazy things that are going on with it. So um, even though they're tiny, they are going to play important roles in our environment. First one is that they're going to harvest light energy. So a lot of them are going to be photosynthetic. You'll find them in plankton and algae, that kind of stuff. And they're taking CO2 out of the atmosphere, which we always like. Um, the other thing they're going to do is they're going to break down dead organisms. So if we didn't have bacteria, we'd have dead stuff all over the place. So when it gets stinky, when something's rotting, that's actually bacteria eating it up, so it's not going to stay there forever. Um, <clears throat> another one is they cause disease. So um, that isn't the best thing, but if you think about population control, it is important, or else there would be way too many of everything. So they're good for that. And then the fourth one, is there's, they're used in industrial technology and biomedical technology. So I told you about that one report that I was reading about. Um, they've got some types of bacteria that they can actually feed them a certain diet, and they'll actually make biodegradable plastic. So there's all sorts of crazy stuff they're finding out about bacteria that's great. They're used in oil spills to help clean up, so awesome. Okay, um, another thing about bacteria is they're going to have a cell wall. So in, in addition to that membrane around the outside, they're actually going to have a cell wall that's going to go around that. And um, that's going to do a bunch of things. Protect them, maintain their shape, prevent them from taking up too much water, which we'll talk about in a later chapter. Now, as far as a cell wall goes, they can be what are called gram-positive or gram-negative based on their cell wall. So this picture here is going to um, help you to see the difference. Uh, there we go. Okay, so on the left here, you've got gram-positive bacteria. And if you look at that kind of off-white colored stuff there, that's the cell wall. So as you can see, the cell wall is pretty thick, but it's pretty simple. On the right, you've got gram-negative bacteria, and you can see that it has a cell wall that's very thin, and then it has this like complex membrane on the outside with all sorts of lipopolysaccharides hanging off of it. So <clears throat> the reason they're called gram-positive and gram-negative has to do with the staining technique that you use. Obviously, gram staining is the technique. And what happens is, since these guys have such a simple cell wall, they're going to absorb that purple dye that is the first stage of the gram staining, and the gram-negative don't. So if you look in this picture, you can see that these kind of sausage-shaped ones are going to be um, gram-positive because they're purple, <clears throat> and then you can kind of see these like swirly ones are a little pinkish and those are gram negative. So why do we care? Well, gram negative bacteria can be a little bit harder to kill with antibiotics and that type of stuff. So you do need to know whether they're gram positive or gram negative when you're figuring out treatments and identification of the species and that type of stuff. So um, that's one other thing is that cell wall. Now, the next thing that they can have is a flagellum. So a flagellum is just going to be like a little tail that they can use to get from place to place. Some of them have more than one, but usually one is, is more um, common. Next thing they're going to have is that plasma membrane. Um, so that's going to be inside of a cell wall, and that's going to um, actually do a lot of the functions that the organelles, like the nucleus and the um, mitochondria and those types of things, do in regular cells, and in our type of cells, eukaryotes. Um, so the plasma membrane actually does some of those jobs, which is really helpful. And uh, yeah, so what I did here is I just made like a list of things that are kind of important about prokaryotes. So they have a plasma membrane. They do not have organelles, which are the little, you know, nucleus, mitochondria, all of those things. 
They do have ribosomes. They have a nucleoid region, which is where the area, the area where your DNA is going to be. And their DNA is actually circular. So that's going to be different from our DNA, which is linear, right? Theirs is actually arranged in a circle. So in the next video, we'll talk about eukaryotes and all those different organelles and learn all of their different jobs.